Qatar, the world's king of natural gas, is hungry for a new title. The first Gulf nation to rely primarily on itself for food. We are able to produce high quality crops, even in the desert. This barren land has no rivers, no freshwater lakes and only a sprinkling of rainfall. Is large-scale farming in this environment a misguided pipe dream? It's highly ambitious that this will actually mitigate their food insecurity. Yet this desert utopia has no limit, backed up by vast wealth, fierce ambition and a dazzling display of imagination. We make the impossible possible here. This is the gateway to Qatar's food supply. It's known as Doha's wholesale market. Fruit and vegetables are sold here, but cultivated in fields thousands of kilometres away in Asia, Australia, Europe and other countries in the Middle East. As with all imported goods, the prices can vary, a fluctuation that's both unwelcome and uncontrollable. Lemon. Lemon, one more. Uh, one packet, 20 real. One more, 100 real. No same, same every day. Only 6% of Qatar's land is considered arable, meaning this Gulf nation relies on others to both grow and set the price of the crops which feed its people. Here in the Arabian desert, the sun shines every day, yet it rains only a handful of times each year. You'd think it would be impossible to grow anything in this harsh climate, yet the Qatari authorities have an ambitious plan to transform this environment into agricultural land. Qatar has one of the highest per capita incomes in the world, but has this state, rich in gas, poor in water, finally stumbled across a challenge that money can't solve? Doha, the capital of this Arab state. The world's largest exporter of liquefied natural gas has blossomed with dizzying speed from a dreary desert port into a mini Manhattan in the sand. Yet during this time imported food prices have jumped by as much as 5% each year and the authorities don't like it. Most of our food is imported, we import about 90% of that. And so this is our biggest challenge because it's not about access to food, it's really about control. And whether that access can change over time and how we can make sure that that change is, does not affect this country adversely. To control an industry, it must be in one's own backyard, which is why the government wants to more than double the number of farms to 3,000 by 2024. This one outside the capital is a prototype. Inside these greenhouses, the freshest strawberries in the country. It will be filmed. This is but I would like to give you Thank this you one to much. taste. The theory of I'm having money and I can get whatever I want anytime, it's no longer uh, will be good for anybody. We must rely on ourselves, at least on our daily consumption. Qatar's plan to turn its food import ratio on its head will also cost a lot of money, certainly billions of euros, but exactly how much the authorities are not willing to say. The elephant in the room is the climate, little rain and temperatures of up to 50 degrees. Yet the barren ground of Um Salal still yields crops of broccoli, cabbage, sweet corn and lettuce, despite a maximum rainfall of five centimetres in a year. We produce it in the winter time. Every plant has one drip beside feeding it. And where is this water coming from? Underground water. This is the only source here, the underground water. Underground water is not an unlimited resource. Qatar's aquifers are already severely depleted. Even with water saving techniques, this type of farming is unsustainable in the long term. But plans here are still surging ahead. Well, this is a new project for a greenhouse for growing uh, vegetables. Many more like this will be needed if Qatar is to reach its goal of 60% of its food grown domestically. I think that Qatar can produce, at least, can cover its needs of vegetables within a few years without actually any need for importing vegetables from abroad. It is possible. But others question whether this strategy of transforming semi-desert land into centres of food production is somewhat misguided. 
I think greening the desert is feasible for a country that has the financial and technological resources to do so, and Qatar obviously does. Um, it is feasible, but I think it is, it is highly ambitious that this will actually mitigate their food insecurity. I do not think they will be able to produce or the levels that they will need to produce that domestically. Our next stop is inside Qatar's industrial city. We're told the route through its gas fields is strictly off limits to cameras. Ironically, it's here in the desert where the nation plans to overcome its agricultural water woes using desalination. This is the newest and largest plant erected on sand by the sea. It's desert and we built everything from scratch within one year. So we make the impossible possible here. We're given special access to this fortress-like facility that produces both electricity and desalinated water on a scale never seen before in Qatar. We're arriving at the desalination plant. This plant alone provides more than 200 million litres of drinkable water each day. In the last 10 to 15 years, there's been enormous progress in the desalination of seawater. And today, we can produce one cubic metre of drinkable water in the Gulf for less than one US dollar. The principle is relatively simple, even if the technology is advanced. Naturally salty seawater is heated to create vapour, which is then condensed into drinking water, seen here in blue. A highly saline solution is a byproduct of desalination. This is pumped back without limit into the Persian Gulf, 25% more salty than when it first arrived. It's too soon to know the long-term effects of this waste, but similar projects are already in the pipeline. We are now uh, on a stage to open and expand our desalination waters in Qatar to make more capacity. Like you see, you ha we have the space, we have the capacity, we have uh, the technology, we have everything. It's just waiting the right time to increase. There is, of course, a plan B. Qatar has been secretly purchasing swathes of foreign land, like here in Australia, where the soil is notably more fertile. And hundreds of millions of euros have been earmarked for agricultural projects in Kenya, Sudan and Brazil. This is a solution which has been already tried. I mean, it's not new to, uh, to know, for example, that there are countries that they are maybe investing uh, uh, elsewhere uh, to make or to produce their, uh, their own food. This could be uh, let's say, another uh, opportunity to make available resources. But homegrown produce remains Qatar's number one priority. This pilot project costing 4 million euros gives an early taste of how far they're willing to go. This is the first crop harvested in recent weeks. Uh, it took just over two and a half weeks for our, from planting to actually picking the crops. As you can see, there's a lot of harvest ready to go and we're picking in each bay approximately a thousand cucumbers per day. It's no, longer it's no surprise then that cucumbers are on the menu at this press conference, a gathering of foreign ministers, partners and project leaders. These are surely that, among the most expensive here. cucumbers in the world, but the overall goal was to prove it was possible. For cucumber, it won't, it's not a cheap cucumber that we're serving here today, but the point of this facility is really to to develop the technologies, to optimise the technologies and, and to make it then commercially viable. Solar power, desalination and evaporative cooling. None of these technologies is new, yet its developers say it's the first time they've been combined. So this really is one of the most unique parts of the project, is that right? That's right. This is where we take the evaporative cooling technology that we use in the greenhouse and apply it to enable desert agriculture. The way we do that is we take saltwater brine, so that's water that was seawater but it's already been evaporated to make fresh water and to provide cooling in the greenhouse. We bring it here, it runs down these pads, the wind pushes the hot desert air across the water through the pad, the air becomes cooler and more humid and that creates good growing conditions for the crops that you see here. There's no guarantee this desert utopia will be feasible in the long run, but it's a risk the Qataris can afford to take. Every innovation project has some risk to it, but I think the risk is far greater if we do not try out these kind of things. It has a tremendous potential to use what we have enough of, like the sunlight here, 
uh, the CO2, the seawater, to produce what we need more of, sustainably produced food, fresh water and electricity. Qatar has been positioning itself as a powerhouse in the region. Should this plan fail, its authorities will be deeply embarrassed. But should the desert bloom and this tiny Gulf nation becomes food independent, then Qatar can reasonably lay claim to its very own food revolution.